this has been a video a long time coming now. Sorry for the delay. Um, in and out of school, been pretty busy. But this kind of pertains to some of the stuff that I've actually did a long research paper on in history class um, during school. Um, I made a research paper on the evolution of the RC model airplane and kind of how it started and how it went along its course in history, starting with some of the very first gliders along with the most influential people uh, through the beginnings of just aeronautics in general. And this one uh, specifically uh, is all about um, a very influential man to the um, RC and just full-sized aircraft community. He started his work with, aeronaut with aeronautics and uh, aerodynamics back in the 1800s, um, starting with one of the very first looks at a flying glider model that used the same concepts as we have today with the wing and tail. Um, my first iteration of it was from plans that I found. This is one of his very first gliders. This is a half scale of it. I have made the full scale, you will see it later. But this is a half scale of his original, uh, very first glider back in 1804 is when he made this. Um, I call it the teardrop glider, uh, mainly for the shape of the teardrop. Um, you can kind of see what it was based around. He actually started with a, um, what would have been a kite of the time. This was a very common kite shape from the 1700s or so, um, mixed with what you could probably see as being maybe uh, arrow fletchings or an arrow of sorts. Um, so this is what it would have started as. These, I have um, two just, um, stainless nuts on here, but it would have started with, he had a lead weight that was wrapped around this, that he could slide and adjust CG. This has a wire allowing him to adjust the pitch and angle at which the tail was set at. Uh, the full scale of what he would have built would have been this. This is his full scale of his 1804 glider. Um, it is actually covered with um, muslin cloth that I've covered it in right now. Um, just a simple cotton fabric, very thin. It would have been very common at the time. I tried to make it as realistic as possible, but also be affordable for when I created it. So it's just uh, poplar dowels. Um, I would have gone little more realistic um, and actual if I had the materials which would have been willow at the time. So this would have been his very first glider he started with. This would have been the exact size of it. Um, I didn't make many of his others but I did make one other. Uh, there was actually no plans for this one. Um, as you can see, I got him off of his, uh, from some of his sketches from his original notebooks, uh, which didn't have dimensions on them. So I was able to determine based on what the dimensions were in the um, review paper that I was reading of the wing, I could determine what the rest of the dimensions were for the entire aircraft. This one would have been from 1839. Um, he made this one towards the end of his life, um, but this is one, this is only a quarter scale of the original. This one would have been 16 feet long. Uh, I had plans on making a full scale one with as close to realistic, uh, as, as close to, as a replica. So with the, as much material as I could get that would have been at the time, which, like I said, would have been willow and stuff like that, willow branches. But it will be very hard to find a willow branch 
16 feet long uh, for this center rock. But this one was one of his later designs. This was one of his last ones before he carried on and started trying to do manned gliders, uh, which he did do manned gliders beforehand, but this is one of his very last ones that he made. Um, one of the key features that I noticed about this is he discovered that when flying, air will get under this and it will cause it to lift, causing an airfoil shape that we would commonly see in aircraft now. Um, this was a huge breaking point in aerodynamics and understanding concepts of flight and lift. Um, you can also tell based on where the wing is located, CG was not exactly a common thing. CG on this aircraft is actually right here. Most aircraft, it's within the first quarter of the wing that the CG should be. This one is unique, which should make it more nose heavy, which would explain to why there was so much angle in the elevator back here or the horizontal stabilizer. Um, this one is very nice and easy to build I found and would be very easy to transport just for the fact that you can take this cloth off and it makes it a lot easier to transport and carry. This is a very unique designs that I have found. These are really cool. Um, this man is Sir George Kiley, one of the uh, very uh, influential people and for a matter of fact many t uh, there are at least three quotes that I have found um, from the Wright brothers that quote how influential Sir George Kiley was in their pursuit to flight. And uh, Sir George Kiley was probably one of the, if I, based on the research I found, he was one of the, if not the first person to do uh, manned flight. Now, it wasn't powered. Uh, the Wright brothers are to be the first to have powered flight, but Kylie was the one of the first, if not the first, to come up with um, manned flight. Um, one of his models that he did do, that he made and flew, was this right here. This is uh, one of his manned gliders. It I made a small replica of it. It would have had a boat, almost almost like a boat for a fuselage that the man would have sat in here. And it would have had, similar to what's up here, it would have been back here, allowing the guy to steer the, um, steer his, the glider from side to side and up and down. Um, he actually had his assistant fly it for him uh, with actually very good success. Um, I tried making this as a flying model. Um, I can't get the CG to work right on it. Could be just because of scaling issues, but um, I at least made a decoration model for what he has done. So this is one of many that he has made. Um, I just wanted to share to you this, uh, these really cool models. Um, this one, because I have not found a single living replica or a surviving model of this specific glider, I was going to build it as close as I could to what he would have done uh, as a living replica, and I was going to do donate it to the Smithsonian. Um, as of right now, I'm still looking for willow wood anyone knows a good place to get it, um, that would be nice. Um, I'm not looking for like blocks of willow, I'm actually looking for the willow branches, the long skinny branches. So if anyone knows a place that would be very kind of you um, to share with me. Other than that, um, I'm going to kick you off to the build montage and some of the flight footage. So, thanks for watching. Thank you.